Jared. Joining us now, Mark Zandi, Moody's Analytics Chief Economist. Mark, it's great to have you back on. I want to get your reaction to that. Does, does that sound like, based on the trajectory we're, we're on right now, that rate cuts could be something coming later next year? Is the market right to think about it that way? Yeah, it does. I, I, uh, I didn't see the interview, but I read the transcript, and it was almost like I was talking. <laughs> it sounded like uh, 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 President Bostic's view is very similar to my own. Uh, I mean, I, I think uh, once it becomes clear to Fed officials that uh, we are going to go back to that 2 percent target, we don't need to be at the 2 percent target, but it's clear that we're headed in that direction in a reasonably timely way. I think that's when they start cutting rates. And you know, I expect it to be kind of sort of summerish. But if you told me fall next year, I, I don't think I'd argue too too strongly. So yeah, I think that's uh, that's on track. I want to get your assessment of the current economic picture because we've we've had a lot of conflicting data, even just this week. Uh, are we seeing an economy that's slowing? Are we seeing an economy that's holding steady? Or are we even potentially seeing an economy as as a few a few Wall Streeters have suggested that is potentially accelerating again? Well, it's pretty good. I mean, Q3 was really strong. I mean, if you look at the tracking estimates for real GDP growth, that's a, you know, the estimate of GDP growth based on all the data that's come in, it's 4%, close to 5% growth. I mean, that's boom like. Uh, the potential growth rate of the economy is closer to two. And by the way, Morgan, I think that's one of the reasons why uh, long term interest rates have risen so significantly here. It's just been really strong economic growth. Now, having said that, there are a bunch of headwinds, you know, uh, debt ahead. You got student loan repayment. You got a UAW strike. You got a potential federal government shutdown. You got higher oil prices and now the higher interest rates. I do expect growth to slow as we make our way towards the end of the year into next. So really, really strong growth up to this point in time. But I, I suspect that we'll start to see, see things throttling back here pretty soon. Mark, what's your assessment of this next phase for the labor market, which has been so tight? We're starting to hear a little bit more about layoffs again. But, you know, th those are just, uh, you know, micro examples. You say that the economy seems to be digesting these labor actions, these strikes, that they're getting resolved anyway, reasonably gracefully. But how much can we tell now about the long term impact of those higher, relatively fixed costs? Well, I, I think the labor market is easing, John. I mean, uh, quit rates are down. That's the percent of folks out there that are quitting their jobs. That was very elevated a year, year and a half ago. That's back to pre-pandemic levels. Hiring rates, they're back to pre-pandemic. We've seen some cutback in hours worked. Uh, businesses have been cutting back on temp help, which is you know, an indication that they're you know, throttling back. They haven't laid off workers. Layoffs have remained very low. I view that more as a feature than a bug because without layoffs, you don't get recession. But the labor market is easing up. Wage growth is is moderating and normalizing. And if I'm right about growth slowing in the next two, three, four, five months, I expect to see, uh, you know, even further easing in labor market conditions as we move forward and consistent with, you know, inflation getting back down to that 2 percent target that, uh, you know, we are looking for uh, by, by, uh, by this time next year.